Well, g'day DCS folks, uh, it's Aaron from Flights On here, and as you probably know, ED has just announced that they are uh, introducing a new third party partner, Avia Storm, who's going to be developing the Tornado, the IDS version, which is very exciting. Now, of course, we know that it's only two weeks away. Now, God knows it'd be probably years, but I know there's a lot of people that are very excited about it. Um, plenty of comments, some cool posts, pictures, and it's, so far this seems to be the only image that we can see of it so far. So, very cool, very cool. Um, but, what I thought I might do is, for those of you who have not actually seen a real tornado live, and that's probably most of you that are outside of the UK more than anything, um, I was very lucky, or well, I am very lucky, because here where I live in, in the middle of nowhere in Perth, Western Australia, our local um, one and only aviation museum actually has a genuine tornado on display, which was um, brought in, the, uh, the RAF donated it to us, which was very nice of them, brought it to Perth, um, I found it in a shipping yard stuck on the back of a um, a container. Um, I think I've probably shared a few pics in the uh, Facebook group at times. But it's now on display. They had the JTARTS team come over and um, make it all sexy. And I was lucky enough to be there on the opening day for um, members of the Aviation Museum only. They had the family day, I think it was a week or two later. So I was lucky enough to get a chance to go and have a look at her in, 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 in person. So I thought you might like to actually see some of the video footage and I'll throw in some of the photos I like uh, just to see what she looks like. Uh, she is a, if I remember correctly, she is a GR4, which is a far more advanced model than what um, Avia Storm is going to be making. I think the IDS was the very early model. I don't know if it is a GR, considered a GR1 or not. But anyway, uh, GR4 is definitely a more advanced model. Um, it, I believe it flew in the Middle East. Um, it's even had, I'm told, one or two former, well, one or two RAF pilots even flew in that particular plane that we got, so which was very cool. So for those of you who haven't been lucky enough to see a tornado, um, hang around and uh, see what you think. And uh, very excited about this coming to Eagle, uh, coming to DCS. But of course we know it's a long way away, so let's sort of maintain the uh, excitement a little bit. Um, maybe they'll start by getting it into the game as a, a nice, sexy-looking AI version. Uh, anyway. That's enough for me. Hope you enjoy the footage and um, have a great day. And who knows what next? What's coming out next from ED? I'm sure they're probably going to release the SR71 and the X15 will be coming announced next week, and they'll be announcing the the map, the lunar map, as of uh, three weeks away. So that's all very exciting. All right, see you later. Speak to you then. You can see here I was shooting videos as walking through the museum to the outdoor area where the tornado is displayed. I had my phone on a handheld tripod so I was able to lift it up to above the wing so I could show you the surface and you can see the swinging wing mechanism at the end and then a bit of a scroll back to the tail. Um, and in a second we are going to move around to a different view. So this is looking at the full tornado from the left hand front side um, as you as I would have said earlier in the video this is a GR4 so it has you'll notice down the bottom those funny looking things you'll see them in a second those funny looking things sticking down the bottom and if I remember correctly those things there there's two of them I think they have a laser designator and a little target laser spotter or something like that in there someone correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure I am now, one of the things you will notice is that the as I look, uh, show the uh, camera through the uh, the engine air inlet that there's nothing in there. So they uh, didn't keep the uh, engines in the plane. Unfortunately, they were removed before we got them. But we did get at least one of the RB199 engines on, and it's inside the museum on display. And I've got a bit of footage of it coming up later on. Now, this is the ginormous big um, drop tank, which uh, they have on the plane. It can carry two of them. Um, you probably just see up there where the um, it's attached to the wing. So that 
little join there swivels as the wing rotates, uh, moves forward and back. Um, now, for the those of you F-14 Tomcat lovers, they uh, they never had any um, weapons carrying stations positioned on the actual wing bit that swung, which the Tornado did. Um, so this tank itself, as you will see from a photo I'm going to pop up here, has uh, something like, I think it's 2250 litre capacity, which is huge. And of course, we get to see uh, some of the other goodies as we move around towards the back. You will notice coming up in a minute, um, I like the way they've got uh, little protective edges covering everywhere so people don't bang themselves. You'll notice there, it says danger, arrest a hook towards the top right. So the Tornado does not have the uh, naval aviator style arrestor hook. Um, all, all military um, fighter jets, for example, particularly the ones that are operating off land base, do have a hook that they can use to catch a wire on the ground if something's gone wrong with the engines or the brakes or whatever, and it can help arrest them, but it's not the same as what you would get on a Navy jet. Um, you can see up above the spot where the engines go, and then another one of their friendly little uh, drop tanks. And those little guys on the end, I can't actually remember what they are. I'll have to look them up and find out the details for you. But we're back around to the side. So you'll notice a ZG791, I think it said. That's the uh, the plane number. You can um, Google that number. It actually shows you up what it is. Apparently, um, two separate Royal Australian Air Force pilots did fly this plane at some stage in combat in the Middle East, I believe. They were on exchange duty with the RAF. Now, I can't remember if this is a small drop tank or some kind of weapon. I think it's a drop tank, so... Apologies if I've got that wrong. So you can see it's it's a fairly compact plane. Now some of you looking at this might say that thing's enormous, but compared to some of the other planes out there, it's actually quite a smallish plane. Um, the Tomcat would be much bigger than this, for example. Um, and the F-111 also, which the Royal Australian Air Force flew, would be um, a much bigger plane as well. That's three mentioned planes that all have swing wings. Nice little um, landing gear lights there, and just a bit of a shot in the wheel world just to see a little bit of the uh, the hydraulics and all that sort of stuff there. Now, the um, the Tornado here is currently, what you're seeing in the video footage is outdoors. They are building some kind of external cover to go up over the top of it to protect it against the weather. Um, that's where the gun was mounted. Uh, from memory, they had a Mauser 27mm auto cannon in there. Uh, and, of course, the air-to-air -air refueling probe, which slots back into the uh, the join there. So, as I said, they, um, they will have a cover built over to protect it from the weather. I Personally, I'd love to have seen it go inside the museum so it gets maximum protection. But they really are jammed for space in there. I just don't think they could fit it in there at this stage. Okay, so we're now coming up to the engine itself, and you can see it here, the RB199. So those two funny things sticking at the ends, they are called clamshells. Um, they are like a, when the plane lands, they want to go into reverse thrust. Those things pop out and um, capture the jet exhaust coming out the back and push it forward to help slow the plane down. So it was uh, an effective method of reducing the, the runway length required to actually land one of these beasties. It's amazing to look at the inside of that and the intricacy involved of putting one of these things together. Uh, very impressive piece of technology there. So anyway, I hope you found that all useful and interesting. Um, if you ever get to Perth and you wanna go and see the tornado, give me a call. I'd love to take you through and show you what it looks like.